At every Formula 1 race, they use over 1,200 individual tyres. And these are key for if a driver is wanting to either win a race or to just simply be quicker than your own teammates. This is a deep dive into the world of Formula 1 tyres because as soon as that chequered flag falls and the race is over, all of these are taken away and never seen again. But this is what happens to Formula 1 tyres after a race. But let's take a step back and firstly understand why so many tyres are used at every race. Now each driver that takes part in the championship is allocated 15 sets of tyres per round, which are provided to them by the official tyre partner Pirelli. The allocated amount is a mixture of different tyre compounds which can change from round to round depending on the location and also the weather conditions. But what you'll usually find is firstly 8 sets of the red soft tyre, which will give you the quickest lap time, but its lifespan is limited to a handful of laps before it its grip to the circuit starts to wear off. Next up, you'll have two sets of the white hard tire, which is the slowest compound you'll get with the slick tires. However, its lifespan on track can be enormous. You'll then get three sets of the yellow medium tire, which is kind of being a mixture of the two compounds, so not being the quickest on the circuit, but the tire will be able to manage more laps. And because of the potential five and a half hours they'll have out on track every race weekend, the teams need a few amounts of tires to cycle through, but not too much that they have an endless supply. If the race organizers determine it as wet, then teams are allowed to use the same tire throughout the whole race. That being a full set of the wet tire, which is designed to have huge grooves to help disperse the water away while whilst it's raining, and then a set of the intermediate tyre, which is more used for when the rain is stopped, but this still has water on track, and it has slightly better grip for where you have dry patches on the track. Now, when the checkered flag falls and the race is over and it's coming to the end of the race weekend, all of the tyres have to then return to Pirelli, even the ones which weren't used during the practice sessions or the race. However, the wheel rims and their wheel covers are belonging to the teams which travel around the world with the car, but just not the rubber tyre. To help the teams and Pirelli keep track of the tyres, they each have a unique number associated in a form of a barcode. During the manufacturing process of the tyre, the rule governing body for Formula 1, the FIA, has a unique number allocated to each individual tyre. The FIA then randomise all of those numbers and put them into sets for the teams. And then all of that information is then sent back to Pruddy in order for them to know who they're being given out to. So when the tyres reach the logistical centre in the UK, these are then scanned using a barcode to be logged into the system in order to know which tyre belongs to which driver of which team. Plus, when the tyre is first added to the wheel rim, inside is a sensor which measures the tyre's temperature and its pressure. So this barcode can also link up that sensor to the tyre and to the wheel rim, which can also act as a checkout inventory. This way both the teams and the FIA can keep track on which tyres are being used so far, and so they don't accidentally mix up a set of tyres. And this relates to another rule that when you come in to change your tyres for a pit stop, all four tyres must be swapped out for a completely different set. So you can't use the front two from one set and another two from from another set. So then the race is finished and all tyres and wheel rims will be returned back to the Pirelli fitting area, which is located within the Formula 1 paddock. Now, as the name suggests, the Pirelli fitting area is where all the tyres eventually come to the racetrack to actually be put onto the wheel rims. These usually come in shipping containers which are kept at around about 25 degrees. This way, the tyres are already at the optimum temperature when they arrive at circuit. And so within the fitting area, as well as adding them onto the wheel rims, this is also where the tyres are taken off. This is all done on site so they have more control over the tyres' air pressure and can monitor any vibrations from any imbalance from when it's added onto the wheel rim. And so it's pretty standard for Formula 1 wheels to be unbalanced for the first time. So to quickly fix this, the machine will tell you how much weight you're needing to counterbalance and stick onto the wheel rim, and then these tyres are then ready to give over to the Formula 1 teams. And then of course at the end of the race weekend, these are where all the wheels return to. Now let's say a team has a spare set of wet tyres or a spare set of intermediate tyres. These can be taken off and reused again in a future session, predominantly because they are a much harder compound and normally used in cooler conditions. Unfortunately though, this isn't the same case for dry tyres. These soft, medium or hard tyres, regardless if they are used in a session or not, are cut and then crushed down and put into the back of a storage container. And then these containers are then sent back to the UK. Now this might be a site which upsets Formula 1 fans, but please let me explain why they do this and why they can't just simply give it away to Formula 1 fans like me or you. Let's first address why they can't reuse the dry slick tyres, even if they haven't been used within the race session. 
These dry tires are first brought up to air pressure whilst they're cold. And once the rubber has expanded and settles at a correct pressure, this is when the heat blankets are turned on. This is done so when the car is about to leave the garage or comes in for a pit stop, the air inside is already at a hot temperature at a precise pressure. This is because if you went out with cold tires and without any heat treatment, whilst driving around, naturally the tires will get extremely warm. And that air pressure inside would become even greater and could even cause the tires to malfunction. And so because of the heated treatment that activates the chemicals inside, which if it was to go cold again and then reheated, that then could also become a safety issue as its structural integrity has changed. But I get it, you know, I would love to have my very own Formula 1 race tyre at home, whether it's been used in the race or not, it would just be great memorabilia to have. But unfortunately, for a number of reasons, this can't happen. The first being that Pirelli are just the official tyre supplier for the Formula 1 championship. This is all actually looked after by Formula 1 and the FIA, so first of all, they would need the approval from both the governing body and the championship. Secondly, it's also the case of protecting their own intellectual property. And by that, what I mean is that Pirelli are not the only other tyre supplier that are out there in the world that would love to work with Formula 1. Which is just one of the reasons why Pirelli hold their own private test days with the Formula 1 teams to get their feedback into how they can constantly improve their tyres every season. And so if their brand new Formula 1 race tyre was out there ready to purchase by anybody, a competitor could buy that, diagnose it in a lab to find out how it was made, what materials were done into the rubber, which could then ultimately threaten their business to be replaced in Formula 1. And at the end of the day, Pirelli just wants to make the best racing tyres out there. And it's just simply easier to not run the risk. Now, once all of the tyres have been accounted for and packed away, these are then shipped back over to UK, where the tyres are then shredded down into small pellets. Now, many Formula 1 fans out there, myself included, have tried to research into the location of where Pirelli send the Formula 1 tyres back into the UK. Maybe with the hope of going there one day and maybe trying to blag one of these Formula 1 tyres for yourself before they get shredded down into small pellets as a small bit of memorabilia. Now, some people have found a location in Oxford, and I can happily say this is not the recycling centre. This is a logistical centre, and please do not go there. The misconception is that this is where all the Formula 1 tyres get returned to, where in actual fact, it's the other way around. This is purely just the logistical centre where all the tyres are initially sent to and then get logged into the system. And then they're sent from here to go to all of the races. But again, this is not where all the Formula 1 tyres return after a race. This is done in a completely separate recycling centre, which looks after a bunch of different other tyres coming in, not just related to Formula 1. These small rubber pellets are then sent to cement factories and burnt to extreme temperatures to be used as fuel. Which, fun fact, because of the high temperature it's burnt at, it doesn't create any pollution. And so if you're wanting your very own Formula 1 tyre to own, I can give you some recommendations, but first of all, I need to give you a bit of a disclaimer. If you're seeing any listings of Sawn selling you a Formula 1 tyre, most likely it's not an actual Formula 1 tyre, it's a show car tyre which is still created by Pirelli, and just like you have display models for Formula 1 cars, you have the exact same for the tyres. Pirelli produced show car tyres which look the exact same part and feel the same part, but are just that, they're just on for display. Pirelli do still make Formula 1 tyres for people who own Formula 1 cars, so if you're wanting a tyre, best bet is to maybe ask someone who owns a Formula 1 car privately. <laughs> the only proper recommendation I can give you is to use a website like F1 Authentics, and by no means is this an advert, they're not paying me to say this, but basically Pirelli create wind tunnel tyres which are used for the Formula 1 teams when they're wind tunnel testing. And you most likely have already seen these tyres because they're being used as the pole position award for when drivers are quickest in qualifying. And because this is already part of the business for Pirelli, they are able to then sell it through a website like F1 Authentics. But if you want to learn more about how Formula 1 works, then why not consider subscribing. My name is Matt Amos, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.